Hey, this is Mike from Helium Street, and welcome back to another episode of the Blue Series. Now, this specific episode, which is episode five, is dedicated uh, to grounding your Helium Hotspot Miner system. Uh, it's going to give you all the details that you need to know to be able to be successful with grounding your system. So, if that's what you're looking for, you're in the right place. Stick around. All right, once again, you can go to heliumstreet.com to learn more about the, all the parts and the pieces that go into this, uh, as well as you'll be able to go to the very bottom of the Blue Series tab, and you'll be able to learn more about all the other videos in the series. Now, the grounding method that we use for the Blue Series is pretty specific. Okay, so we're on the second floor of an outbuilding. Uh, so we're coming in off of the antenna mast, and we're running coax from that point, uh, to our miner. Okay, so we're interrupting our miner with a lightning arrestor and uh, we're bringing ground wires off of that and then we're meeting it up with the wire that comes off the antenna mast and we're bonding together right there so that we can only so we only have to bring one wire down all the way down to the main floor to where we connect it into our electrical system. So you can do it a couple different ways uh, but we decided to go 10 gauge uh, off of the antenna and 10 gauge coming out of the uh, lightning arrestor. So you're gonna, we're going to talk about all these details in a second. I just want you to know that there's a couple different methods that you can do. You can do it this way, where it shows those orange dots. Those are split bolts. Um, one right here is where we are bonding the antenna mast wire into the lightning arrestor wire, and that's okay. Uh, electrical inspectors have no problem with that method. In this specific method, uh, we're bringing two wires down. So we're bringing one wire off of the antenna mask going back to the electrical system uh, and then we have another wire coming off of the uh, lightning arrestor going all the way back. Uh, so you're going to see how we did it here um, in the video so stick around. Okay so um, like I was saying we have the the antenna fully installed uh, sealed waterproof with the uh, electrical tape around the over the uh, coax seal and the one thing I wanted to highlight was grounding. So basically, the way that you see it here right now um, is not correct. I wanted to, I, I backed that out so that I could show you the way I've seen it at other installations. Um, and you don't want to use a kind of a load bearing type fastener. Uh, with a piece of copper wire underneath it because it basically takes that fastener out of the picture and it no longer makes it effective. So the proper way to ground a mast is to actually drill a small hole. Uh, and what I'll be doing is doing it in the side of the mast. Uh, and the reason why I'm not going to do it on here is because water is going to be dripping down this, this surface. And I don't want it constantly dripping into the wire connection. I want to do it on the side uh, of it because that's where the least amount of moisture is going to be um, present. Uh, and there's not going to be a lot of moisture coming down this. I mean, there's going to, it's going to drip and, and so on, but it's not going to be huge. But anyway, I wanted to show you kind of like what not to do. So don't do that. Uh, so I'll back that screw out a little bit, take this wire off. I'm going to drill a hole on the side of it. It's a three millimeter drill bit, I believe, uh, is what I typically use um, for these screws. Uh, this is in a tape case, but so I use these screws. These are proper ground screws. I can leave the, of course, I'll leave the the link to this product, HeliumStreet.com, and in the series. This happens to be Blue Series antenna, but um, you'll see this in all of them. It's the same ground screw that I used for I use for all my installations. All right, so here it is. Here's the ground screw. Um, so the ground screw is now attached to the side of the mast. Um, the wires are all going in. I've got my drip loop, and I've got it fastened. I'm using all my. Uh, fasteners are either stainless steel or they're, they're galvanized um so yeah this is pretty much it all i have to do now is come back and i put my sealant in here to seal this hole up and i'll be good to go so now this ground wire goes inside and so that's the next part of this grounding 
uh, component of this video. Okay, as you can see, we have a um, both the antenna, the LMR240, and the ground wire coming out of this hole uh, from, the, from the other side of this. It probably looks familiar to you. Uh, this is the, exactly the opposite side. As you can see, we got into that truss cleat, so I'm gonna have to uh, run my wires over to the edge of it and um, hammer that back into place, but um, that, was, <laughs> that was a challenging hole um, when I got into that truss cleat. But anyway, yeah, so it's doable. <clears throat> you just gotta give it a little bit. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run those both those wires up. Uh, we're gonna run them up, up there, and then down the side of this truss. Okay, and then we're gonna come down into the miner. Um, as you can see, we're um, currently set up here. Um, we've got my temperature sensor and I've got my fan up here because I'm questioning whether or not this is a good application. So I'm monitoring the temperature with a fan and without a fan. Doesn't appear that that's made any difference. Um, but you know, it's all trial and error with this stuff. But I'm going to be running. I'm going to be running my my ground cable down one side, and then I'm going to be running my antenna cable down the other side, and then they're going to come together where the lightning arrestor right here. And then I'm going to be bonding um, my my ground wires together that come out of the arrestor and the off the mast. I'm going to be bonding them together with a proper uh, split bolt and then I'll be running one 10 gauge wire over and then down over to the electrical service panel. So that's uh, that's the scoop here. So take a look. All right. So like I was saying, I've got the green wire coming off the mast. That is a 10 gauge wire. It doesn't need to be 10 gauge, it only needs to be 17 gauge coming off the mast. But since what I'm doing here is, is that this is a higher elevation installation and I don't want to run two wires all the way back to my ground so, or my uh, electrical panel, okay, which is where I'm going with this. I'm going right below the electrical panel on the ground that comes out of the, ground, uh, out of the electrical panel, out of the electrical system. So basically what I'm doing here is I got a 10 gauge coming out of here you can go bigger, right? 17 is smaller, okay? So 10 gauge is bigger. I got 10 gauge coming out. It's coming down, all right? And I'm gonna terminate it right there. I'm just well stopping it. And then right here, I'm gonna be coming out of my lightning arrestor, right here. And then that goes all the way back, all the way back to my electrical panel, okay? And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm, I stripped away a little bit of the installation, insulation right here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that mast wire and I'm going to bring 10 gauge to 10 gauge together right here with, and I'm going to bond it. This is not splicing. You're not allowed to splice per NEC guidelines. Electric code doesn't allow you to do a splice right here, which would be another, just another wire on the, on the end of it that would go. I've got a wire that's coming out of out of a device right here. It's coming out. It's a 10 gauge. It's coming out of that lightning arrestor and going all the way down to the to the source. And right here, I'm coming down from the mass with with a wire that doesn't need to be 10 gauge. Only needs to be 17, but I've got 10 gauge. And I'm gonna do it with this this split bolt. Okay, if you can see the split bolt, it's kind of a handy little fastener right here. Okay, um, basically, it just allows you to. Uh, bring two wires together. Okay, here we go. Coming out off the mast. 10 gauge coming off the mast, coming down. Down here, joining, bonded with a split bolt to the wire that's coming out of the lightning arrestor. 10 gauge. Okay, coming here. Had to, had to, Take a little bit of the insulation off this, this, this wire right here. Take the insulation off it about an inch so that I could attach this bonding split bolt. And now this wire goes down to the electrical service and I'll show you where we join it down there. All right, so the first way that we're gonna terminate this ground is we're going to bring our wire from up top. This goes up 
all the way up to directly without any stops, any gaps or anything, um, all the way from the lightning arrestor. And if you recall, we have the antenna mass that was bonded to it up there. So this is carrying the ground for both the mast and the coax. Okay, so because the because that lightning arrestor interrupted the um, the coax, right? So um, now right here, get up close here. So this is the existing ground. This goes down. This goes down to a ground rod, and it comes up. This is the existing. Uh, existing service and it goes into the, the circuit box okay um, and it goes right into this panel and then it feeds into a block of uh, likely I haven't had this off yet but it likely feeds into a ground block when lots of different grounds go into it and so this is one way that you can terminate your ground and we'll just use this split bolt like we did at the other spot up upstairs right here the split bolt and we'll just attach it right here, just like this. So you can see the wire comes in and the split bolt is doing its job. It's, um, it's capturing the end of the wire here and it's going right into this braided wire that goes into the bottom of this box. So this is properly grounded system now. Now the other option for grounding is to bring the wire outside. Uh, this is not necessary in this application because all of our wirings run on the inside of the building. So there really wouldn't be any reason to, to come back outside with a wire and then go down to the ground rod that's, this, this ground rod and this wire that's coming out right here, that's, that's what's grounding this electrical system. So this goes right to the circuit breaker box. Um, and so this is, it, this is the electrical system ground so you could technically come out of this uh building with the um the green wire that we were just showing and bury it and then come into a clamp like this or an additional clamp on top of this uh but just not necessary in this application so we're not going to kind of get into that level of detail for this uh but we probably will in other episodes All right, so I hope that was really informative for you. Um, now, if you have any questions or, or, or comments or anything about the material that we, that we presented today, make sure you leave them in the comment section of this video. Go down there, ask your questions. You know, if, if we don't answer them here at Helium Street, I'm sure there's going to be lots of feedback from the rest of the community. This community uh, communicates so, um, so effective and, um, and uh, frequent. Uh, with each other that, that it's really a huge benefit uh, so again uh, like subscribe hit that bell icon and uh, bookmark this video and we'll see you in the next episode thanks for being here